What is up everyone? In this video, I'm going to teach you everything I need to know on how to write idiomatic Go code. But before we continue, if you like the videos I'm providing to you, please consider subscribing to my channel. Give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comments and jump into the Discord community. All right, let's go. So basically, uh, in GoLine, there are a lot, of, um, a lot of small things that can be done in an idiomatic way, uh, and that's much appreciated by the community. And a lot of these uh, things on the list that I'm gonna cover are basically also is a very high chance that these are going to be asked in any Golang job interview, right? So the first thing is basically constant declarations. It's a very simple one, but still I see the, uh, a lot of people making a mistake by declaring their constants completely um, uppercase, right? Uppercase scalar, for example, 0 0.1. That's not an idiomatic way in Golang. In Golang, we treat constants just like other variables, and we need to say it like this. Right, so this const is going to be uh, this killer is going to be a constant, and it's just going to be declared like any normal variable, lowercase. Of course, if you want to export it, then you can um, capitalize the first letter. The next, uh, if you if you basically want to want to have multiple constants, for example, there's going to be a version or something, then you need to group them, and the top of your file, of course, you need to group them into this uh, const const thing with the with the parentheses, right? Easy, that are constants. Uh, the reason why I'm covering this is uh, still a lot of people are using these completely capitalized constants. The next, variable grouping, right? Let's say we have a function, for example, function foo, and let's say uh, this function is gonna return an integer, right? And in a function, normally you will declare some variables, right? You could say x is gonna be 100, y is gonna be uh, two, for example, and then you're gonna have foo is gonna be a string, for example, right? And let's uh, satisfy the compiler by uh, print this foo out and then return x plus y or something, right? There's actually nothing wrong with this function, to be honest, but um, if you really wanna make this idiomatic and easier to read, then you should group your variables into a var and then delete these uh, columns here, boom. And then you can see that everything is nicely formatted for you, which make things easier to read. And uh, a lot of people, coming into your code will be thankful to you, right? So uh, you don't need to do that. For example, if you have one for uh, one variable, for example, then you can basically just do it like that. And to be honest, it also really depends. Um, maybe two is also not needed, but still, if I see, if I have multiple of these variables in a function or wherever, I'm always grouping them in a var because um, it's just, it's just m much more easier and much more idiomatic, right? That's basically f uh, variable grouping. The next thing on the list is functions that panic. That's a very important one, uh, and that could be that could be an interview uh, question. So, for example, we have um, parse int from string, which is going to be uh, a string like this, and you can already see that this um, this s is just one. It's just one letter for uh, a variable naming, and that's that's also idiomatic going, right? We don't use very large um, variable namings. It depends also. It depends on the use case, but try to, um, it's just go, man. It's just go, very small variable namings. It is what it is. I'm so sorry, Rubyists. The next, uh, wait, so we have parsing from string. So a hey, parsing from string can return an error. So what we do is we return an int and an error. And I'm gonna say, for example, here do some logic, right? <coughs> Man, I'm getting sick. Do some logic here, and then we're gonna return, uh, for example, 10, or what's going on here, 10 or null, right? 10 and null, like this, right? Perfectly fine, but it could be in your application that a function will not return an error, but that a function will panic, because in my opinion, if you have an error that uh, will basically put your application into an unrecoverable state, then a panic is uh, perfectly fine. So let's say this function panics, right? Like this, it's gonna just return an integer and then of course we need a panic. So we're gonna say uh, panic, whoops, or something like that, right? Uh, although this is perfectly fine, but if your function panics, you should always prefix it with must. And this is going to turn you from, from a Golang engineer to an elite Golang engineer because still a lot of people are not doing this and 
hey, sometimes myself, I forget to do this, but if I'm working for a client or in a company, or basically I'm creating a library that's basically going to be on GitHub open source, I will always use this must uh, prefix if my fun function is going to panic because everybody that's going to read this, because you need to understand that if you call this function, people won't see what's going on here, right? So they see just must parse and then Every uh, experienced Golang developer will say, oh, it's a must parse int. That basically means that if it's not able to parse it, it will panic. They, all, they instantly know it without even to look at the, the, implement, the, the implementation, right? Very important. If your function panics, prefix it with must. Must parse int, must do this, must do that, right? Cool. The next thing we have is <coughs> strict initialization. A very important thing. For example, uh, type foo, or even server, or let's just do foo, it doesn't really matter. Or actually, vector. This is a, a very nice um, example. Real use case. So a vector is going to be x int, uh, y int, and in Golang you can also do x, y, like that. Uh, I don't like this, but hey, is this idiomatic, not idiomatic? I just do it like that, right? But hey, that's out of scope, just telling you this. So this is a vector, it, it has an X and a Y. And um, basically, if you want to construct this vector, then you could say that the V or vector, it doesn't actually matter, uh, is going to be a vector, right? And a lot of people are doing this, right? They do, for example, 10, 20. That's not idiomatic. The problem is this will shoot you in the foot sooner or later. It already shot myself in the foot. It's still a big hole. And uh, it's basically live recorded on YouTube somewhere in my videos about in the, in the blockchain series where I'm doing some signature stuff and the signature has some values in it. Uh, RSV or something, I think it was. And um, I just declared my signature just like, like this without the named, without the named variables like this. And yeah, I debugged this for, I think, 15 minutes uh, in the video. And uh, eventually I found what the issue was. And it's basically I uh, swapped them, swapped them around. And the pro that, that's the problem with this unnamed uh, assignments, right? But if you do named assignments, you could say Y is going to be 20 and X is going to be 10. And I'll, I, I know that this is basically a little bit too verbose, but it doesn't matter. Just do it like this and always uh, make sure you... You formatted it like this. This is the um, idiomatic, the most idiomatic approach in Golang to um, initialize your structure. Always, actually, what am I doing? This is actually what what I, what I meant. Always n uh, assign your your variables with the name in your struct. Although it's a small struct because this vector is very small, x y, but you're gonna you're gonna shoot yourself in the foot if you not do that, right? All right. That's basically this. Uh, keep that in mind, it's very important also in job interviews uh, or if you do an assignment, make sure you, you construct your, your stuff like this. They will appreciate it and you will have some extra points. Okay, mutex grouping. Very important aspect uh, either. And that's basically because I sell myself have a company, I'm also using Golang there. Uh, and if I need to do job interviews, this is a question I'm always asking and it's basically, I, I, I tell them make a structure that basically has a map and there is a mutex uh, and, I, and, and some other variables and they can choose it up. And just by looking at the way they, they organize their, their structure, their declaration, I already know what time it is, right? So let's say we have a server, struct, <coughs> and we have a list and address or something which is going to be a string. Uh, then we're going to have is running, uh, which is going to be a bool, for example. And then we're going to have peers, which is going to be a map string netcom. And uh, of course, we want to protect this peers with a mutex, right? We're going to say, because yeah, we, if you want to add a mutex to the map or the, uh, add a peer to the map or delete a peer to the map, uh, maps are not concurrent safe. So we want to protect that with a mutex. So we're going to say this is going to be a sync RW mutex, right? And this is not idiomatic go. Although this seems perfectly fine because we have a mutex and, and everything is good, but this is a, a rookie mistake. What you should do is always group your um, mutexes and, and the type you want to protect just like that. You always put your mutex just on top of the, the type you want to protect. That basically means that everybody reading this code can instantly see, okay, this mutex is going to protect the peers, right? Because it could be that you will have another mutex. And what I'm always doing is basically do it like this. I'm always naming the mutex 
for example, peerlock or peers mu, just like that. And then in this case could be, uh, I don't know, an other mu or an other lock. Whatever, whatever you prefer, lock mu, it, it, it doesn't matter to be honest. Uh, and this is going to be other, right? So this is the key takeaway. Always put your mutex right above the type you want to protect and group them nicely. It's easy to read and it's a community idiomatic approach. Right. And if I miss something, uh, hey, if I forget, uh, forgot to cover something or I didn't explain anything uh, or, or I didn't explain something clear enough, hey, let me know. I'm also just a human. Uh, the next thing is interface declaration and namings. Yes, important. In an interface, basically what you could do, uh, I see this in a, a lot of people doing, for example, type storage interface. And then they have get put delete um, patch. Wait, put this patch, right? Or not. It doesn't matter. Or update or patch, <laughs> whatever, man, <laughs> whatever. So a couple things are wrong with this. An interface in Golang is basically, it's the bread and butter. Interfaces uh, it, it can cause, causes maintainability, composability, and all that stuff. But if you, the biggest mistake you can make is first, um, every interface needs to be end on uh, er, for example, a reader, writer, fetcher. And in this case, you could call it a storer, right? So everything should be, it's the idiomatic approach in Golang, it should be er, <laughs> or whatever I need to say it. Uh, so er needs to be appended and it needs to make sense, right? You could say storager, that doesn't make any sense. A storer, that doesn't make sense. So that's what you need to do. That's idiomatic, very important because it could be an interview question and it's, it's gonna, it's gonna, <laughs> it's, Make sure that that's, that's, that's okay. The next problem with this interface is that it's too many, in my opinion, too many functions in it, right? Uh, this interface needs to do too much things. An interface needs to be just doing what it needs to do. Of course, a storer, yeah, if you want to abstract this, these things are very, are, are mandatory. But what you need to do is compose your interfaces, right? What you could do is like this. You could say type a gather. It's going to be an interface. Right? And what is the getter going to do? It's going to get. The next thing, uh, you have this putter. Right? A putter. What is that going to do? Well, it's going to put. You know what I mean? And you can see it coming. Delete, patcher, whatever, deleter. You know what I mean? You could call it a deller or something. <laughs> uh, hey, up to you. Be creative. So, And then you can actually do something like your store. It can be, can be a getter. It can be a putter. You know what I mean? So you see, you see it already coming, right? That's that's the idiomatic approach of handling with interfaces and naming your interfaces, right? Cool. The next thing is function grouping. Function grouping, what do I mean by that is, um, let's say you have an application and you have a func, uh, a very important uh, func here. And then you're gonna have a very, a, uh, an, an, a public and exposed and exported very important func exported and then you're gonna have a simple util just like that right and let's let's scramble it up so you can already see what I what I what I do with uh, what I mean with function grouping is that the simple utility is a simple utility there is no need for this dude to be at the top of your file so people uh, going to read your code and the first thing they see is this, is this stupid simple util that rounds on numbers or is prefixing shenanigans or reading a simple file we don't care so the simple util needs to be demoted to the bottom then we have this very important func which is a uh, already something that needs to be higher in the high uh, <laughs> on the top of your file right um, but still this is an ex a not exported function and i'm always giving um I think it's much more important to put your very important exported functions, public functions at the top of your file, and then um, you should specify your important functions, but that are private, right? That's an idiomatic way of uh, structuring your Go code, but structuring uh, in a file level base, right? In a, in a function level base. And the same thing is with your variables, right? If you have, for example, you should always um, put the variables that are important at the top of your file and the 
the less important they become, they can be demoted to the bottom, right? The same thing with your variables and constants always at the top, right? That's important. All right, that's basically what I mean with this function grouping. Um, just group it with importance. The next thing, HTTP handler naming. This is a very simple one. If you have, uh, if you want to do HTTP handlers, should always start, in my opinion. Uh, and I think it's just a GoLang community thing. Idiomatic way is going to be handle get user by ID, for example. Right. This is how a handler should should uh, should be named or func handle. Um, resize image, something like that. You know what I mean? So prefix it with handle so everybody knows this is a handler, right? This is a handler, it's going to, be, it's going to get called uh, in some API. Nobody needs to know what's going on uh, all the time, but they just by seeing that's a handle, it's going to be a handler. All right, then we have enums. Uh, of course, Golang doesn't have the concept of enums, but a very important thing I want to show is, for example, we have a suit. It's going to be a byte and let's say you want to make some you want to replicate some kind of an enum what i'm always doing is i make a const and i group them right it's very important i group these guys uh, because they are interconnected you will see why so for example const and this is going to be a lot of people do this right they're going to say hearts it's going to be a suit right the suit of cards right hearts clips diamonds that stuff uh and it's going to be for example you could do one or you could do an IOTA thing. And if you want to know what IOTA is, uh, look it up. It's completely out of the scope. Uh, yeah, let's do IOTA. And then we could say hearts, uh, clips, um, diamonds, and a hey, space, of course, <laughs> most important, the space, right? So this is basically how you could replicate some kind of an enum way. It's not an enum, I know. Don't pitchfork me about that, but hey. You know what, I, what, I, what I'm trying to say here? You know which direction I'm going with this. This is fine, right? But what I'm always doing, and it's an idiomatic approach, is to... This variable naming could be very confusing unless you say it's going to be suit hearts, suit clips, suit diamonds, suit spades. This is the uh, idiomatic approach because in this way we know, okay, this is a type suit. These are basically all prefixed with suits, so we know they are some kind of, um, I call it enum, but it isn't, but A, hey, you know what I mean, right? So do it like this, like I said, if you're doing some job interviews and you're doing an assignment and you can do everything I'm just going to teach you, it's, it's 10 years of Golang experience I'm just placing in this 20 minute video, right? It's so important, although it seems minor and it seems unimportant but guys this is so fucking important if you if you if you want to go from from an average level intermediate level to even an expert level by just doing these small adjustments in your go code um it, it people will say whoa this guy knows what he's talking about if you do all these stuff uh and now we have constructor constructor i think i may, uh, made a typo in this thing constructor yeah this is this is better right so a constructor we don't have a constructor, but it's very important to understand. For example, we have um, an order. It's going to be a strict. Just like that. Um, let's give it something. Let's give it a size. Uh, it's going to be a float64, actually. Let's make it realistic. Float64. And you want to construct this order, right? And, and what you should do is always an idiomatic approach is you have your type. And right below your type you make the constructor, which basically is going to be, it's always going to be a new type. And in this case, new name of your type. And in this case, it's going to be an order. So it's going to be new order, right? And if it's return, and, and then you can, it, you could choose, it's going to return a pointer or just uh, a variable. So let's say a pointer to an order. And then we could do, I don't know, some logic here, for example, and then return, um, this what's going on in vs code please uh, we're going to return this order and then you could actually construct it you could say size you could delete this, this logic here because it does not need to be any logic you could say size is going to be a float 64 and then you're going to say size right you're not going to do this right you're not going to do this like i mentioned in the beginning right this is not idiomatic go don't do that what you need to do 
is size size that's how we need to do it All right so right before your right below your strict you make the constructor which will be new and then the name the name the name <laughs> the name of your type <coughs> in this case going to be new order very important let's say that this is package order right if this is package order you're not going to say because if you're going to import it it's going to be order new order I don't like that because it's it's yeah I don't like it so what you need to do what I'm always doing then is basically say new right and if you then want to import order uh, from from this other package it's going to be order new but still it depends right if, if it's idematic or not it's is 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 completely out of scope but you could choose order new order sometimes it's 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 conflicting right if you see it's not conflicting but it's weird like if you say order book new order book it could be like order book new and it will just return an order book something like that but it depends uh, on how you prefer it this i don't think it is an idiomatic way in the, in this thing but um, i prefer new because otherwise it's going to be a repetitive a repetitive naming all right yes of course hey guys girls whatever uh, it could be that i forget some important things there will be there will be a, a lot of other stuff that that could be idiomatic but these are the things i'm just think about on the top of my head and to make the video uh, somewhat of, of, of 20 minutes and not too long so it's easy to digest and it's going to I think there are very important uh, topics that we discussed so if you know these already you are already uh, a couple steps ahead on your competition if you like the video I'm providing to you consider subscribing to my channel give me a thumbs up leave some questions in the comments jump into the discord and I'm looking forward to see you in one of my live streams or future videos. Bye-bye.